Today, I wanna to share with you my top five favorite tools to use for managing my money. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Kristen. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my favorite tools that I use to manage my money, maintain my budget, and make sure we are staying organized with our finances. Now, I know so many of you are either on a debt-free journey or you are working to maintain your budget or get better at budgeting. And I was just thinking about these couple of things that I use almost daily, and they really have helped me so, so much stay on track with my finances and just really pay more attention and be aware of where my money is at pretty much on any given day. I thought it would be a good video idea to share these with you in case you struggle with managing your money or having a hard time keeping on top of your budget. So let's jump right in. So the first tool I use every single day without fail is my banking apps or go to the actual website on my laptop. Now, I know this one might kind of seem like a no-brainer. Until we really got into this debt-free journey, I wasn't using my online banking app or website near as much as I do now. I can tell you I am probably in at least one of my bank accounts at least once a day, usually checking all my accounts multiple times a week. And I also wanna add if you use credit cards, then to include your credit card app or website as well. And I like to check these every single day. Here's what I do. I take just a couple minutes. This does not have to be lengthy. Usually in the morning when I get up and I'm having my coffee and feeding my dogs and my kids are coming down and getting ready for school, I will sit at the kitchen table with my laptop or my phone, I will hop into my bank account and I will just kind of take a quick peek and see which transactions cleared the night before. If anything happens to look a little funky, maybe I see a charge that I don't recognize or if we had any deposits that I wasn't expecting. Unfortunately, that one doesn't happen as often. That allows me to just really have a very clear picture of what's going on with my bank account on any given day so I always know where I'm at. And I find this especially beneficial when you're working to pay off debt, if you keep a very low balance in your checking account, and also if you have a tendency to sometimes forget about bills being taken out or if you have a lot of bills that are auto-drafted, that way you are well aware when they come out of your account, you can make sure you're updating your checkbook or your register or however you keep track of your checking account and you can be very aware of what's coming in and what's going out and make sure that you are avoiding any possible overdrafts or fees at all costs because that's one surefire way to waste your money is to be paying bank fees every single month. Making sure you are paying very close attention to your bank accounts is going to avoid that. The other thing I wanna mention is we have experienced multiple breaches of our credit card account throughout the years. I'm sure you have as well. It doesn't seem like anyone is safe from this these days. But taking another minute or two to log into your credit card account and just having a quick look over all of your transactions, make sure they all look familiar, make sure it's all something that you know you personally charged or authorized is going to go a long way to making sure you don't have any kind of fraudulent activity on your credit card account. And of course, if you do see something that looks unfamiliar or a little bit weird, questionable, make sure you contact your credit card company immediately because it's possible that somebody else got a hold of your card number. And if that is the case, then of course, the quicker you can catch it and put a stop to it, the better. The next tool I use to manage my money is my personal budget binder. This is a product I created myself and I have been using for years now. I created this shortly after starting our budgeting and debt-free journey because initially we were using the Dave Ramsey budgeting sheets that come in the Financial Peace University workbook. And while they were working for a while, I just kind of felt like I needed more. I just really wanted to tweak it and make it my own and tailor it to our specific financial needs. So I created this budget binder and after using it for a few months, I decided to put it up for sale on Etsy. So you can grab your own copy of my Begin to Budget budget binder. This is the same system I use today, three years into our budgeting journey. I love it, it works really, really well for us. It is a digital file, so if you do purchase it, you will not get a physical product shipped to you, you will simply get some PDF files. I offer it in a colored version and a black and white version, and it is very simple. 
simple. I like to keep all of my budgeting tools very simple. If they're not simple and they're overcomplicated, I find that I waste too much time trying to customize them. I find that I get overwhelmed easily and it really takes the focus off the budgeting and seems to have me focus more on trying to figure out what I'm using. So my approach to budgeting is super simple. I use this every single day and while I tend to not create my budget on the handwritten budgeting sheets quite as often as I used to, I do believe that if you are new to budgeting or you're just getting started, writing your budget out physically with pen and paper is the very best way to start and the very best way to get truly acclimated with your finances, with your numbers, just like when you used to have to write out your spelling words in school. I do believe there's just something about putting the pen to the paper that really helps you remember and familiarize yourself with your finances. I'm going to leave a link to my budget binder down below and I'm also going to leave a code for you to get a special discount today if you think you would like to try using the budget finder as well. The next tool I love to use is a net worth tracker. This is a really basic spreadsheet I created on Google Sheets just so I had a place where I could quickly come and peek on our net worth at any time. And I do update the spreadsheet on a monthly basis. I'm not too hung up on tracking our net worth. I do update it according to the monthly changes I see on our mortgage statement. Otherwise, as you can tell, not too much goes into this spreadsheet. It's really basic, but it is a tool that I love to keep an eye on because I find it so fascinating that just a few short years ago, we were in debt and had a very, very negative net worth. And now not only have we paid off our debt, but we've come positive and I get to see that number increase every single month. I'm going to leave a link for this spreadsheet down below in the description box. You can copy it for free if you'd like to use it. You can probably design a better one for yourself, but if you're someone who has no idea how to use a spreadsheet program, you can go ahead and grab the link to this Use it for yourself if you'd like so you can start tracking your net worth as well. I just find it really motivating and it's a fun way to kind of look back over your progress and it's also helpful if you're feeling frustrated or maybe if you're feeling discouraged, like you're not making the progress on your financial journey that you would like to be making. It's a great way to look back and get a picture of where you started and where you are now. So go ahead and grab that spreadsheet down below if you would like to copy it and use it to track your own net worth. The next tool I like to use is my budget spreadsheet. On my channel, I make a budget video in the beginning of every single month. If you are new to my channel and you have not seen them before, I'll leave a link to my budgeting playlist up here and you can go check it out and see exactly how I do my budget each month. And what you'll see in these videos is my budget spreadsheet that I use. This is another tool that I have created for myself. After we were budgeting for a while, I started to want a quicker solution as much as I liked the pen and paper and I do still use that sometimes. I really wanted to have it on a digital format where I can also access it from my phone on the go if I need to for any reason. So I created a budget spreadsheet on Google Sheets and that is where I create and update my budget every single month. I am in that spreadsheet at least one time a day, often more times than one, but I love it because everything is already calculated. So any changes I need to make, I can just quickly plug the new number in and it will recalculate everything automatically and just makes it so much easier than having to sit there and calculate everything out by hand on a calculator all over again. I use this spreadsheet in conjunction with my budget binder as well to help keep me organized and update my budget all year round. And I love working with both of them together. Anytime I'm working in my budget, I have my spreadsheet pulled up on my computer and I have my budget binder open in front of me on my desk. They work really well together. I will leave a link down below where you can go ahead and grab this budget spreadsheet for yourself if you think that this is something that would help you in your budgeting journey as well. And the last tool is probably one of my favorites. And while I didn't create this tool myself, I'm really not 
smart enough to create this tool myself because this one's pretty advanced, but this is another spreadsheet. Can you tell I have a slight obsession with spreadsheets? This one is called a debt snowball calculator. And oh my gosh, I wish so badly I would have found this tool while we were still in debt because it would have helped us so much while we were working to pay off debt, but I didn't. I actually found it pretty much right when we got out of debt and I ended up purchasing it anyway because I wanted to be able to track our mortgage payoff. While we are not really paying extra on our mortgage now, we will be in the future. And I just love the way this calculator works. It is so, so simple. It's only for Excel or Google Sheets. It does not work in Max Numbers spreadsheet program. So if you only use numbers, this wouldn't work for you. But if you use Excel or Sheets, then go ahead and grab yourself this calculator. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. It is so worth the money and it is incredibly motivating to be able to play around with your numbers and see the changes in real time. So I'm gonna quickly hop on my computer and show you guys exactly how this works because I feel like it's a lot easier to show you and maybe wouldn't make quite as much sense to just explain it to you. So let's hop onto the computer. Now, when you get the calculator, you're going to obviously open it. And the first thing you're going to do is name your loan. I'm gonna show you how I do it for mine personally. I am debt free except for my mortgage. So the only account I really have to track in here currently is my mortgage payoff. So we're gonna go ahead and use my real numbers. Uh, so you just change the label on column one here, the name of loan, and then you're going to add your current balance. So my current balance is $192,052. My interest rate is three and a quarter. And the minimum payment, which is my actual mortgage payment, is $1,426.90. Now, what you do is you just hit enter, and that's going to bring me over here, and you're going to put the current month, which is now February 2020, and then you're going to put the total monthly payment that you pay, including the minimum payment you already put to the left. So for here, I have $1,430, that is what I pay each month to my mortgage. So you can see, I'm gonna type that in here and you hit enter. And then this is going to tell me exactly when my mortgage is going to be paid off and I love this. So look at all the data this gives you. Currently my total principal remaining is $192,052 left. It's going to tell me that the interest I'm going to pay over the remaining life of this loan is $47,000, just over $47,000. And I will actually end up paying $239,053 from now until the end of the loan. It also gives you a minimum payment and your current rate that we already covered. So that tells me that I have 168 months until I'm completely debt-free, having this mortgage fully paid off in January of 2034. So that's cool, but here's the really fun thing. Then you come over to this section over here, section seven, and this is going to allow you to actually project what your loan will do if you're making extra payments. So let's just say, for example, we have our taxes that we're submitting now, and if for some reason we get a tax return, I actually don't think we're going to, but if, some, if for some reason we get a tax return this year, let's just say, for example, sake, we get back $2,000, and we would like to put that full $2,000 on our mortgage payment next month in March. Let's just go ahead and enter that $2,000 here. And then we're going to go over and see how that impacted our debt payoff. So that's now telling us that we would be debt free in 165 months instead, moving our debt free date to October 2033 versus what it was originally January 2034. Isn't that so cool? I just wanna show you how this can also work if you are currently working the debt snowball, which is what this calculator was initially created for, and show you 
how it works with multiple accounts. So let's say you have car loan one and you have a balance of $10,000 on that. Let's say your interest rate is low at 2% and your minimum payment is you have a $350 car payment this month and then you have car loan two, and that one's a little bit lower at 6,000, two and a half interest rate, and say your minimum payment on that one is 300, and then you have your student loan, can't type today, your student loan is 15,000, really can't type today, it's 15,000 and maybe your interest rate's three and a half on that and your minimum payment is 125 and then how about you have a credit card as well and that is $5,000, your interest rate is 18% and you make a minimum payment each month on that of about $200. It's going to show you automatically here when that will be paid off at this rate. And your total debt-free date of paying all of these off, if you're using the debt snowball method, is going to be 27 months and you will be debt-free in April 2022. You can go up here then and adjust your payments and kind of play around and see how your debt-free date is going to change if you adjust the payments you're making each month. So this is such a great tool. I think it really allows you to play around with the numbers. I think it can really motivate you to want to strive, work harder to be able to put more money on your debt each month and really increase those minimum payments you're paying each month and also really help inspire yourself to work as hard as you possibly can and really go gazelle intense to get your debt paid off as fast as possible and work towards that financial freedom of being able to keep your own paychecks each month. Okay, my friends, those are my top five favorite tools I use to manage my budget and manage my money. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you found them helpful. Like I said, I have all the links down below. Check them out. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. If you use any tools to manage your money, maybe you use one that I absolutely need to check out. Let me know. I would love to hear what you guys use. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you liked it or you found it helpful in some way, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and I hope you you'll consider subscribing to my channel while you're at it. I would love to see you back here again. Now, next up, we are going to chat about the top three methods to pay off your debt. So if you are currently working to get out of debt or you're struggling to pay off your debt, or maybe you're just thinking about starting to pay off your debt, then you need to check out this video. I am going to go over in detail the top three methods to get out of debt because not all debt payoff methods are created equal. So we are going to go over the pros and cons in each of them so you can decide which method is going to work best for you. So I will see you over there in this video next. Have a great day, guys. Bye.